Kevin Finnerty is Tony Soprano's alter ego, essentially. We meet Kevin Finnerty in Tony's Coma Dream in season six, episode two, Join the Club. Tony is critically ill in the hospital after being shot by his uncle, Junior, and things are really touch and go. When Tony wakes up in his coma dream and he goes to sign in at a conference, he hands the lady his photo ID and she gives it back to him and he looks at it and sees that it's someone named Kevin Finnerty. Infinity, infinity, anyway. So the person that we see is Tony Soprano. We hear him leave a message on his answering machine at home and it says the Soprano residence, but the ID and briefcase and all the belongings that he has on him is Kevin Finnerty's stuff, whoever Kevin Finnerty is. Whether his name's Tony or Kevin, it's a much different person from the Tony Soprano that we all know very well by this point. And we meet him in Tony's coma dream after he gets shot by Uncle Junior and lands in the hospital in a coma. Hi, you reached the Soprano. Leave a message. Bye. <laughs> Stop picking your nose. When we see Kevin Finnerty wake up and sit on his bed, it reminds me of when Vito does the same in season six, episode six, Live Free or Die. And it's also interesting that Vito's staying at the White Mountain Inn, but I'll talk more about that in a bit. Identity. Who am I? Where am I going? Join the club. This club is full of people, including not just the ones we see sitting with Kevin Finnerty, but also some from the other world. There was this one night in the hospital when it was very touch and go with Tony. Mm -hmm. He came out of the coma for a minute and he said, who am I? Where am I going? You know, at the time, I didn't know what he meant. Coming here, I feel the same way. Vito, Polly. What's your name again? Polly Goltieri. Jersey? Your father was run over by a trolley, right? By mentioning his father, it's probably another reminder to Polly that he doesn't actually know who his father is. Even Brendan Falone's got an identity. He's dead. When Tony calls home and speaks to his wife, he tells her he found brochures with no company name. Again, we go back to these questions of identity. There's two Tony Sopranos. You've never seen the other one. What the hell? This is my wallet. Oh, no. I just flew in from New Jersey, and Colonel Colonna, he speaks at 1030. I can't let you in without photo ID, sir. Security. I'm on the list. Sorry. It's a whole new world. His license has a Kingman, Arizona address, and no phone is listed. What do you know about Scottsdale? Arizona? Yeah, I was thinking I would pick there to live when this assignment is over. Assignment? Be Mr. and Mrs. Mike Smith. We, we could sell some Indian relics by the road. Maybe start a rattlesnake ranch. This is our chance to get out, Tony. We could start a whole new life. Have some Mormons over to dinner, eat some tomatoes that have no taste. You know what I want, Tony? I want those kids to have a father. This song that we hear while Tony's sitting at the bar sounds familiar, doesn't it? Give me the grouper sandwich. You got it. Bye, boss. <laughs> Any word from your Ivy League? And it's interesting that someone from the military is the speaker that Tony wants to see, or Kevin Finnerty, I should say. Tony Soprano likes to talk about soldiers. We're soldiers, you know. Soldiers don't go to hell. It's war. Soldiers, they kill other soldiers. But in Kevin Finnerty's world, these are the real soldiers, or ex-soldiers, who matter. Now let's talk about lawsuits. Just like the monks are offering to bring legal action and sue Kevin Finnerty to hold him accountable, we see a similar thing happen back in season one, episode 10, a hit is a hit. Ordinarily, I'd be more than happy to stroll down memory lane with you, but it's reparations that I seek. Why don't we call this what it is, a shakedown? I didn't sell you this heating equipment, but I am kind of worried about what I might have done. He's kind of worried about what he might have done. There's a contrast from the real Tony Soprano that we usually see. Wait, let me step back. It's not that 
the Tony Soprano we know doesn't worry. Of course he worries. He's full of dread. That's how he ended up in Dr. Melfi's office in the first place. It's always with me. But this guy here, he seems to be worried about what he might have done that could affect other people. It's not just about him. So we see there's a contrast here. Yesterday I was diagnosed with Alzheimer's. <laughs> One day we will all die. And then we'll be the same as that tree. No me, no you. You can't do nothing about it. And you, you can't fight it. All the shit's for nothing. And if all the shit's for nothing, why do I gotta think about it? Be that as it may, we need heat. We'll need to find someone who will take responsibility. Well, I can't do that. Then the lawsuit proceeds. My lawyers have done a little research. I think that the final figure is somewhere around $400,000. And when the monk says, one day we will all die, it makes me think of Tony and Dr. Malfi's conversation from Denial, Anger, Acceptance, where he says, if all this shit's for nothing, why do I gotta think about it? What Kevin Finnerty does for a living is similar to Tony when he talks about selling patio furniture on the side of the road. You know, I put food on the table. My father was in it. My uncle was in it. Maybe I was too lazy to think for myself. Considered myself a rebel. Maybe being a rebel in my family would have been selling patio furniture on Room 22. Tony. You never did tell us how you made the jump from selling patio furniture to precision optics. Hmm, who does she remind you of? Usually they just engage in what's called threat behavior. It would look great in your office. Yeah, I might have a look at my office before you make that call. Think about it. If you're interested, give me a call. Now let's talk about Alzheimer's. Kevin Finnerty ends up in the hospital and is confused about who he is or why he's there. And the doctor tells him that he has Alzheimer's. Detailing misuse of joint for his 401k funds. Toronto, Allison Pat, Channel 6. Allison, oh. 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 Guess who came in earlier? Tommy Formacola. Uncle Joe, Tommy Formacola died a few years ago. Not Tommy, it's Chidrula's son, Tommy. Jesus Christ, you had me worried there for a minute. You get hit in the head. See how good you do. What? You don't have any chance to have any headaches or blurred vision or any of that shit, do you? See these dark areas? These are parts of your brain that have been oxygen deprived. No. Shut them off. Why are you sitting in the dark? I don't know. I like the dark. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, these are consistent with a diagnosis of Alzheimer's. Perhaps Tony worries that he, too, will become a victim of that disease. Ironically, you know how remember when is the lowest form of conversation? Well, with Alzheimer's, it's usually the problem. People not remembering things. Well, what is your name? What does it matter? I'm not going to know myself soon. I follow my finger. He said they'll do this every hour. Check the neurological. He was disoriented when he came in. He, he, I don't know, he didn't seem like himself. For a man his age, he could have been working on a dementia for quite a while and the blow to the head tipped him over. You mean like Alzheimer's? That's one form of it. Let's talk more about those white houses. So there are a few houses that we see in Tony Soprano's world that remind me of the Inn at the Oaks that we see here in the coma dream. We have the house where Hesh and the guys meet with massive genius you, to discuss the lawsuit. We have Tony when he's in his calling all cars dream, walking up to the old house and seeing the shadow. We know that shadow reappears here at the Inn at the Oaks. And even a house where AJ and his buddies throw a party in all due respect. I wonder if briefcases are allowed. It's five bucks. Your cup's your admission pass. The holiday lights we see at the end of the Oaks could also be lights from the operating room, similar to the light he sees at different points throughout his coma dream. I lost my briefcase. My whole life was in it. That makes me think of suitcases.
these suitcases and briefcases feel like symbols of our lives and everything that we carry with us. Sometimes literally, sometimes metaphorically speaking. Wait a minute, is that why you got out the suitcase? I am not going back to the site. And the devil may call you when he thinks it's time. Put the suitcase in my trunk. Yeah, tell us about it. Me know, speak the English, made this be When we see the trees blowing, it makes me think of right outside the Soprano home, both in season one and in season six, when Tony arrives home from the hospital and goes outside to sit by the pool and relax. What is that? Briefcases aren't allowed. Oh, the voice. Please, let me take that from you. Where am I going? That's the mystery, isn't it? As different as Tony Soprano and Kevin Finnerty, maybe, there are certain things at their core, that human condition, that we all probably feel one way or another, and in some form or another, at one point or another, about identity and choices and what our purpose or our arc really is. They appear to be two things, right? Two separate things, but they're not. The tornadoes is just wind. The wind stirred up in different directions. The fact is, nothing is separate. Everything is connected. Everything is everything. I'm down with that. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video on Kevin Finnerty.